Today, we're talking to Christopher Ecclestone, who has just started his coverage of Oxico resources. He talks about how Oxico has a uniquely endowed project with exposure to rare earths, titanium, hafnium, and zircon. He also talks about exposure to tin. Is that correct? Absolutely. I had no idea that there was so much monocyte. How about we start there? Yeah, um, who knew? Uh, the, you know, anyone who goes to the, who has known this stock for a long time, sees from the name and from the history and they think it's a precious metal story. But in fact, the company has done a total 180, if not a total 360, and uh, is now a player and a real player, not just a talker, in the uh, monazite uh, mark. Now, monazite, of course, was not one of the trendy uh, rare earth minerals back in the, the last boom. But this time around, it's virtually the word on everyone's lips because um, while it does have the negative in some uh, contexts of uh, uh, uranium and thorium, uh, that issue seems to have become one that's uh, somewhat moot. And so people just liking the fact uh, that monazite sands, you scoop them up, you send them off to be processed and have the thorium removed. And then hey-ho, you've suddenly got a rare earth concentrate without blasting, without having to go to the most isolated places in Nunavut or wherever, um, or Greenland, dare I say, um, and you're in business. And so Oxico saw this. Um, they've started off with a trading relationship in the DRC with their sister company, um, uh, Central American Nickel, um, where they're actually trading the metal for them. But they actually have an arrangement in Brazil and they have their own property in uh, Colombia, uh, all of which are rich in monazite sands. And so um, they've gone from being a nothing to being a player uh, in a space where, you know, still most of the people are talkers and not doers. They've gone to being a player. I've told a few people over the last year and a half, I said, Oxico is a dark horse. Get them on, get them on your whiteboard. They're definitely a rare earth player. Can you tell yes. us a little bit more about the surprises? I was reading uh, about the actual rare earth resource, which seems to be shockingly high for me, for, for my experience. Can you tell us a little bit about the highlights of that? And then everybody, if you want to know, if Christopher says buy or hold or sell, you've got to go to Hell Gardening Company and actually get this research report. So Christopher, talk to me a little bit about these highlights because it, it surprised me, the, the actual numbers. Uh, well, people tend to look at monazite sands not as little discrete deposits, but as enormous amounts of sand that have accumulated uh, back millennia ago, if not millions of years ago, when uh, rock was broken down and converted into sand. So when you're generally talking about monazite sands, oh, no matter where they might be, or mineral sands, let's say, um, they tend to come in very large numbers. And uh, the only limitation is how much you can scoop up and how much you can ship out and how much you can then sell. Um, it's not an issue of having something really small in a really isolated location. Um, and that is the advantage of the monazite sands and why they're really sort of pushing their way in. Uh, for anyone who knows the, the you know, genesis of this, it was really um, when uh, the US company Energy Fuels suddenly decided it was going to start processing mineral sands from the US, converting them into uh, concentrate, then sending them off to Neo Performance Materials uh, Refinery in, in Estonia. Uh, but once people saw that, saw that that worked, everyone said, hey, we've got some monazite sand. Well, not everybody. The, the few people had monazite sand still, because no one had been trumpeting this mineralization, you know, as you well remember. Back in the first boom, there were carbonatites, bastocytes, and these things. And monazite was totally pushed to the side because, you know, um, radioactivity was a no-no. But, um, you know, the marriage between um, Comores, the U.S. chemical company, and Energy Fuels and NEO showed that you can get the uh, radioactivity out. So that is the, the side of the business that um, Oxico, uh, you know, plugging into because it had these large monazite sands at their, um, at their uh, you know, fingertips, and uh, now they're monetizing. In the case of the ones in the DRC, which they, they're 
they've merely got a trading relationship. So they actually market the product that's mined by artisanals, but they market it to China because the Chinese don't care about the radioactivity like um, uh, you know, Western companies do. And so they've, um, the Chinese will take it, they will remove the radioactivity, which then gives them material that they can use for their own nuclear industry. Um, but the West is now turning around and saying, hey, the Chinese are getting all this stuff. What can we do? We can plug into this. And so um, uh, Oxico had this uh, large, what they thought was tin tailings operation in the backwoods of Brazil, over near the Bolivian border. And um, turns out that it has a large monazite component as well that had long been overlooked and had largely gone into the tailings. So in their efforts to reprocess the tin tailings to take advantage of the surge in tin price, uh, they discovered, hey, we've got monazite here as well. And so um, that is where uh, we get the situation where there's, there's this great potential resource. And then, of course, they had their own property in uh, Colombia on the border with Venezuela, but on the right side of that border. And um, that has proven to be uh, a really exciting multi-mineral deposit. So not only does it have the rare earths, but it has a lot of precious metals and other things like tantalum, specialty metals. It's, it's really the monastic asset that Oxico has is really like an eye-popping collection of metals, largely because it was created um, bizarrely by an asteroid a crash into the earth uh, many millions of years ago. So again, we have Halgart and Company. You're one of the best in the world in critical minerals, and you've initiated coverage. And if you want to find out, go to Christopher Eccleston, Ecclestone's website, which is what, Christopher? Uh, www.halgartandco.com. That's H-A-L-L-G-A-R-T-E-N-C-O.com. You'll learn a lot.